Hello and welcome to Euphoria TV Breaking News. My name is Dr David Bull. I'm a medical journalist and I'm thrilled to be your host for this, our second show of February 2021. This show highlights the task force by the ENT section of the European Academy of Allergy and Clinical Immunology into endoscopic scoring of nasal polyposis. Now, in a minute, I'll be talking to Professor Philippe Hevart from Ghent University Hospital in Belgium about the new polyp scoring system and how it was developed. I'll also be talking to Professor Sana Salmi from Helsinki University Hospital in Finland about why she believes the new system is revolutionary for doctors and patients alike. Chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps, or CRSWNP, is an inflammatory disease of the nasal and paranasal sinus mucosa, and it affects around 4% of the population, causing a wide range of symptoms. Now, diagnosis is based on nasal endoscopy, and treatment is centred around symptom control. Treatment efficacy, though, is often measured using patient-reported symptom scores and quality-of-life measures, which aren't very objective. Hence, endoscopic scoring of nasal polyposis is a much better measure. However, there are so many different scoring systems, so that complicates comparison of clinical trial results. So, the task force aims to provide a unified, comprehensive endoscopic scoring system. And here to tell us more about the new scoring system is Professor Philippe Hevart, Professor of Rhinology and Allergology at Ghent University Hospital in Belgium. Philippe, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Shall we start right at the beginning by asking what is a nasal polyp score and why do you need it? Well, a nasal polyp score is we take our nasal endoscope, we look in the nose and we score how large the polyps are based on simple anatomical landmarks such as inferior turbinate, middle turbinate. And why do we need it? Well, we need it in daily clinics for follow-up after surgery, how if, if polyps are uh, recurring or after treatment, how they are responding to your treatments. And of course, in the last decade, we have done many, many trials, uh, double blind placebo controls with biologicals, and we need to have a good standardized and uniform scoring system because in most of the trials, it was the primary endpoint. So today we are very happy to announce that both the FDA and the EMA approved some of these biologicals uh, with the indication of nasal polyps. And therefore now it's very important to have uniform and standardized scoring of these polyps um, to make it a little bit comprehensive for the medical field. Yes, absolutely, because obviously I spoke there in the introduction about the many different scoring systems that are out there. So, so that's a great step forward. But tell me um, how you got to where you are. How did this new polyp scoring system come about? How did you actually go about developing it? So actually, the scoring system was developed several years ago, uh, more than 10 years ago, but then it was used um, in many double-blind placebo-controlled trials. And in these trials, we see that uh, to have a good reliability of the scoring, you need to give good instructions, not only to the readers, <laughs> but only also to the people that have to make the videos. So the first thing you really have to have is good standardized instructions on how to make the video endoscopy. Because then you can make a proper mm. scoring. And then we had to make also uh, reading rules, how to do the interpretation of the scoring. And you can say, well, is the scoring not always the same? Yes, but you can have interpretation in certain difficult cases. I give you an example. If you had, for example, a patient where you want to score based on the anatomical landmark, the medial turbinate, and the patient had surgery before and the medial turbinate was um, resected, 
well, then you can't obviously not use this as an anatomical landmark. So you have to give some small rules how to do then the scoring in that case. And with a group, with a task force, we try to make a consensus on simple reading rules, how to make these interpretation tips and tricks for the doctors, how to do this scoring. So obviously, by adopting those reading rules, you overcame some of the challenges. Were there other major challenges to developing the scoring system? Well, I think the major challenge is always adoption. Uh, if you have many doctors in the world, everyone <laughs> has his own, own opinion. So adoption of the polyp score is one of the major challenges. But since it has been used now in more than 2,500 patients in all these trials as a primary endpoint, I think there is no enough evidence on reliability of this score. So obviously adoption is going well, but what are your ultimate aims and aspirations for the scoring system? Well, the scoring system should be simple. It should be easy to use in daily clinics, in follow-up of your patients after surgery and after medical treatment. And of course, also governments will uh, try to give you some uh, indication uh, rules when you could or uh, you, you can't use a certain treatment or an expensive biological. Well, thank you very much indeed for your time. It's been really interesting to hear all about the new scoring system. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Havard. Thank you very much. So we've heard about the new polyp scoring system and how it was developed, but the big question is how has it gone down in clinical practice? Well, to tell us her thoughts on the matter, I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Sana Salmi. Now, she is Senior Consultant Otolaryngologist at the Skin and Allergy Hospital at Helsinki University Hospital in Finland. Sana, it is really good of you to join us. Let me start by asking your opinion. So we've heard about all the uh, different scoring systems, but what do you believe are the shortcomings of the current nasal polyposis scoring systems? A general limitation is that nasal polyp scores are always ordinal values, not continuous values. And this makes it difficult to detect discrete changes in nasal polyp size. Also a limitation is that the score not always correlate with symptoms or radiologic imaging. And then a problem of the current scoring system especially is that it still leaves some room for different interpretations and opinions, although the scoring is based on anatomical landmarks and definitions. Well, it's very interesting that you talk there about interpretation, and that's something that Professor Havart also talked about. So that leads us nicely into me asking you, what do you think then of the new scoring system, and is there anything that you particularly like about it? The landmarks are better and more stable in the new polyp scoring system, especially they uh, do not depend on visualization of middle turbinate. The new scoring system takes into account the polyp size better also, so that a small medial polyp can get a score three. The score should be at least two before score three can be considered. And there are clear reading principles published in the new scoring system, which helps physicians to assess a score. There is a high agreement between physicians, and also there has shown to be a high intra-reader reliability. So let me ask you then, how do you think this new scoring system will help patients? And how do you think it will help the physician community in the near future and beyond? Um, I think the new endoscopic nasal polyp score is very helpful in assessing extent of polyposis in the nasal cavity. It is cost effective, reproducible, and non harmful in frequent use as comparing with radiologic imaging. Then the new score, together with symptom questioning, helps physicians to assess disease severity, treatment plan, and outcomes. Then the new score also helps very much the patient to learn what is his disease severity, what treatment opinions 
would there be and options of the of the best treatment and what are the outcomes of the treatments that are used and finally the new endoscopic score is very useful in clinical research in order to compare outcomes of different treatments well thank you very much uh, for such insightful comments thank you that's professor sana salmi there thank you thank you very much well, that is it for this edition of Euphoria TV Breaking News. Many thanks to my guests, to Professor Hayward and Professor Salmi, for their invaluable insights and their thoughts on the new scoring system. And I really hope its implementation is beneficial for doctors and for patients alike. Now, don't forget, you can find more information about Euphoria and you can also register for the Euphoria meetings on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. And you can also follow us on Twitter. The address is at Euphoria. But that is it for this show. See you soon and thank you for watching.